This is CBN News Watch. It is Wednesday, June 2nd, 2021. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, another cyber attack on business, this time aimed at a major meat processing company. And it could drive up some prices at the grocery store. Democrats have been sharply split over support for Israel during its recent battle, but some members of Congress are taking the opportunity to show their support for the Jewish state. We'll have that story from Jerusalem. One of the major changes brought about by the COVID pandemic, a sharp rise in homeschooling. We're going to hear what parents can learn about how to teach their children at home and how Americans battle for freedom. The Revolutionary War began with prayer by men who didn't even believe they could pray together. We've got those stories and so much more for you in today's edition of CBN News Watch. I want to begin this half hour with another cyber attack on business. This one aimed at the food supply and it could affect your wallet. The world's largest meat processing company, JBS, is getting back online today after production around the world was disrupted by a ransomware cyber attack. The attack shut down production at several processing facilities, potentially affecting beef and pork prices at supermarkets. If JBS were shut down even one day, the U.S. would lose almost a quarter of its beef processing capacity. Charlene Aaron is on this story. The ransomware attack on JBS, the world's largest meat processing company, disrupted production around the world. The second such attack on a major company in just weeks. JBS, the second largest producer of beef, pork and chicken in the U.S., says it has made significant progress in dealing with the recent cyber attack and expects the vast majority of its plants to be back up and running Wednesday. The attack sent buyers scrambling for alternatives. Processing plants shut down in eight states, Canada and Australia. According to a local union, which represents 3,000 workers at a plant in Greeley, Colorado, two shifts canceled Tuesday. JBS blaming a ransomware attack on its computer servers with origins in Russia. It's very damaging. Um, even if they're able to get their data back, which it looks like they will, there's still a toll to be had. The attack comes on the heels of the Colonial Pipeline hack, which led the company to shut down the fuel line, causing thousands of gas stations in the southeast to run dry. I don't think we've seen uh, a period of this kind of uh, sort of high intensity cyber operations from Russian soil directed against a variety of different U.S. targets arguably ever. JBS notifying the White House Sunday that a criminal organization, likely based in Russia, was holding parts of its primary computer servers hostage, demanding a payout. The White House now engaging directly with the Russian government while the FBI investigates the attack. We're assessing any impacts on supply and the president has directed the administration to determine what we can do to mitigate any impacts as they may become necessary. It's unclear how the attack will affect consumers and meat prices in the days to come, but experts say such attacks are becoming all too common. The reality is that consumers are going to continue to experience more of these kinds of disruptions. Meanwhile, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency is offering technical support to JBS. President Biden is still set to meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin later this month in Geneva. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Turning now to Israel, the recent war between Hamas and Israel sparked a debate in the U.S. Congress about support. Many progressive Democrats were highly critical of Israel opening a split in the Democratic Party, which has historically been very supportive of the Jewish state. But at the same time, Republicans strongly stood behind Israel during this recent battle with Hamas. As Chris Mitchell now reports from Jerusalem, the current recess on Capitol Hill gave an opportunity for some leaders to show their support for Israel personally. After the recent war between Israel and Hamas, Senator Lindsey Graham came here to tell Israeli leaders that U.S. aid would not be cut, but actually pledged more support to the Jewish state. He met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu with a sign that said, more for Israel. He explained that in our one-on-one -on -one interview with the senator. The more Hezbollah, Hamas, and Iran try to destroy Israel, the more I want to help. So I had a sign that was a simple message, more for Israel. This talk of cutting aid is ridiculous. He came with a message to his Senate colleagues and House members who want to cut aid to Israel. Hamas and Hezbollah and Iran are radical Islamic 
terrorist organizations and a nation state that would remake the region in their own image, that would destroy the state of Israel because uh, under their religious doctrine, there's no place for the Jewish state. If you don't get that, you don't understand the conflict. Graham came with an alternative to the Iranian nuclear deal. The current course the world is on with Iran is a disaster. There is no way to give the Iranians an enrichment capability that will not lead to a bomb in my view. So let's test the Iranians. They say they want peaceful nuclear power. You can have it. The world will provide you the fuel rods you need to run the reactor. There'll be an international fuel bank. You don't need to enrich. But Graham helping Israel is personal. I'm a Christian. I believe that God blesses those who bless Israel. And the people who want to destroy Israel will destroy us if they could. And if you don't get that, you don't understand the times we're living in. And for Senator Graham, Jerusalem is like no other place on earth. It's God's zip code. It's the holiest of the holies for my faith, the Jewish people, Islam. It's a special place. It's God's city. And uh, it is the capital of Israel. And I'm glad we got that right. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has signed a bill that bans transgender athletes from competing in women's and girls' sports in public school teams. The Republican governor said girls are going to play girls supporting and boys are going to play boys' sports. So the bill that we're doing uh, today uh, will ensure fairness uh, for women athletes uh, for years to come in the state of Florida. Um, it says that athletic teams or sports uh, that are designated for females are open uh, to females. And we're going to go based off biology, not based off ideology when we're doing sports. The bill defines a student's biological sex based on the student's official birth certificate at the time of birth. And as part of the bill we're signing today, we're not only making sure women have opportunities for scholarships and competition at the highest level, we're also putting uh, in statute ways to actually vindicate the rights of any women athletes who may be discriminated against. Florida is the latest Republican-controlled state to take such action. Supporters of the measures believe competition between females and trans athletes who were born as males is not fair. And a new Gallup poll found 62 percent of Americans say trans athletes should only be allowed to play on sports teams that correspond with their birth gender, while 34 percent say they should be able to play on teams that match their new gender identity. Coming up, the COVID pandemic has shut down schools across the country, and that's led to a huge growth in homeschooling. We're going to learn more about teaching your children at home when we come back. Stay with us. That just depends on your definition of when life begins. Watch Dan and Dale tackle trending topics that test your faith on the next Faith Wire, Monday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. The Global Lane takes you around the world providing facts over fiction. What might rising trade and geopolitical tensions mean for you on the home front? With over 45 years of experience, award-winning journalist Gary Lane brings you the truth from a global angle. What about the issue of immigration? World news analysis you won't see anywhere else. And it's all right here on the Global Lane. Thursday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel.
The COVID-19 pandemic hit our educational system hard, and one of the major effects came in homeschooling. A census report found homeschooling doubled during COVID. Here with us for more on that and how parents can be prepared for homeschooling is Ann Miller, the executive director of the Home Educators Association of Virginia. Thank you so much for being here. So tell us more about how COVID uh, affected homeschooling. What changes did we see as a result? Well, your reference to the census was remarkable in that homeschooling for the 2021 school year doubled. An interesting fact that that U.S. Census found, and that census was also just released in March, mm. they also found that the number of black or African-American families increased five times. Wow. Which is amazing because in homeschooling, there's long been a stigma against homeschooling mm -hmm. in the black and some black communities. Mm -hmm. And but homeschooling, black children are thriving. And research shows that they're 42 percentile points ahead in uh, uh, language arts and 26 percentile points ahead in math scores compared to public school students, homeschool black students. Mm. So we're, we're just seeing um, people understanding the benefits of home education and uh, the, the growth and, um, and you know, we see the Lord turning the hearts of the parents to mm -hmm. the children mm -hmm. and, uh, and they wanna do what's right for their kids. And they're finding that homeschooling has been a tremendous option here in Virginia our uh, homeschooling has increased 48 percent. Wow. Yeah. It's... Now, children, of course, have been taught because of the school shutdowns. How is this different um, from the virtual learning many families have, have experienced over the last year? Yeah, well, virtual learning can, is, can actually be a component of home education. Okay. Home education is really about parent-directed, parent-led education. Mm -hmm. So parents can use whatever works for their kids. Mm -hmm. um, and homeschooling also, as it's, it's a wonderful way to disciple our children. Mm -hmm. And you know there's a battle raging for the hearts and the minds of our kids. Absolutely. And it's an opportunity for parents to instill their values and their beliefs, as well as academics. Homeschoolers, the research shows they do phenomenally well academically. But homeschooling, Ephraim, is about so much more than just academics. Mm -hmm. And for those who are worried, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, colleges love homeschoolers. Every homeschool parent, whether they they have a preschooler and they want to know, can my kid get into college? Absolutely. And we, we do an annual convention um, and we have over 12,000 people who attend every year. Mm. And the, the, the college fair part, the preschool parents are there like, can my kids get into college? Colleges actually are recruiting homeschoolers. Mm. And we have one college that told us that they are putting their marketing budget into recruiting homeschoolers because they've changed the atmosphere on their campus. Mm. Oh, wow. So um, the results speak for themselves and um, uh, the uh, but in the end, it, homeschooling is about a lot more than academics. It's about relationships. Mm -hmm. It's about relationships with our children, with each other, and ultimately our relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so parents have that opportunity through educating their children at home to disciple them. Mm -hmm. In, in the ways of the Lord, and also the world becomes your classroom. Yes, indeed. You know, it's age-integrated uh, learning in uh, kind of an outside-the-box way. I love it. So you can take education on the road with you if necessary. Yeah, yeah. road schooling <laughs> yes. is actually is a thing. Well, the world does become your classroom, indeed. and you have you're not limited to a set of textbooks or a certain curriculum. You know, and and struggling learners, homeschooling is especially good for struggling learners because you, parents can remediate. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that parents found out from COVID. Yeah. They, they didn't know why their kids were struggling in school mm -hmm. and they were involved parents. And then they found out like, oh, they don't know their math facts. Yeah. So they were able to re stop everything, mm -hmm. remediate, and let them catch up, mastery learning. Love it, before we let you go, we're just about out of time. You got a conference coming up, Homeschooling with Confidence Unstoppable. Yes. Um, tell us who this is for and why it's important right now. This is for any parent or grandparent who's interested in teaching and training their children at home. And the conference is filled with practical, relevant tips, ideas, out of the box, think, helping parents think outside the box about education because we're used to one model of education yeah. and homeschooling is a completely different model. So we wanna equip and encourage parents um, to have the confidence to teach their children.
Indeed. Thank you so much, Ann Miller. Confidence is what we need because I know I'm a parent as well, and I didn't think I was qualified to homeschool until this last year. <laughs> yes, most so, parents don't, you. but it's it it it's the it's it grows us mm -hmm. as well. But it's a wonderful thing, and there is. Um, it's so important for today because there is a battle for the hearts and the minds of our children, and we don't want them to become collateral damage. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I want to let you know at home that you can find out more about going to the homeschooling. Ooh, go and to, it's free. And it's, it's free. All <laughs> free. Very good. How did I forget that? It is all free. <laughs> go to homeschoolingwithconfidence.org. You can find it. As you just heard, it is all, all free. free. Thank you so much, Ann. Much appreciated. You are very welcome. Great to have you. Thank you. you. Still ahead, Dennis Quaid brings a real-life story of inspiration to a small screen near you. We've got an up-close look at the Blue Miracle and a candid conversation with the actor. It's all coming up next, right here on CBN News Watch. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Wednesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. How would you like to get a redo on your health, on your body, on your arteries, so you could have the energy you had 20 years ago? The great news is you can. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. I've written four New York Times bestsellers, but even better than having to read all that, you can listen to this DVD and watch it. Protect your heart? Yes, you can. Here's how. Go to CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000 for your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Let the medical experts show you their new discoveries on how to avoid heart disease and even reverse it. Easy steps to uncover the hidden dangers in your medicine cabinet, reduce stress, and get a complete do-over for your health. Call 1-800-700-7000. That's 1-800-700-7000. Or go to CBN.com to claim your free copy of Protect Your Heart. And welcome back to CBN News Watch. I want to turn our attention now to a new film on Netflix based on a true story. Now, here's the premise. A cash-strapped orphanage partners with a washed-up boat captain for a chance to win a lucrative fishing competition that could save their home. That captain is portrayed by actor Dennis Quaid. All right, listen up, guys. Attention. There's a storm that's going to reach the coast in a few hours. The good news? After we get done eating, we can line sandbags to protect from flooding. We're orphans, not idiots. Maybe God just wanted to get all the unluckiest kids in one building so he could crush us yeah, all at once. Got enough. Hurricane Odile was the biggest storm we've seen in decades. How much food do we have left? About a week. Crazy things happen all the time, right? Are you using this tournament to save your orphanage? What surprised you most when you learned that this is all based on a true story? Just that. <laughs> <laughs> you have the chance to make all that money at once. Omar, all you have to do is catch a fish. I don't know the first thing about fishing. Welcome to Bisbee's Black and Blue, the Super Bowl of fishing tournaments. My name is Captain Wade Malloy, and I am the only two-time champion of Bisbee's Black and Blue tournament. World's well, biggest fishing tournament. Best teams in the world compete for millions in prizes. It wouldn't have been made if it wasn't a true story. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that remarkable of a story. It is? It feels like old times. Only you're older and fatter. 
Wait, old buddy, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid you don't qualify for this list. What are you talking about? Dennis, this is an inspiring story, and you seem to be doing uh, a whole lot more of these type of films, uh, films that sort of push and move and inspire us. What did you learn from this story? One thing that you know, miracles do happen. That, oh, that's wow. for sure. Mm. This was uh, truly that. What if you team me up with a local fisherman? Doesn't have to be anybody even good. Doesn't even have to be a fisherman. With them, those kids. The character I play, you know, he's really much, pretty much jaded, and uh, at the end of his own ego and for himself and. You know, he has these orphans that are foisted upon him. Uh, and I think uh, he learned humility. And in that humility, that's, that's when God does his work as far as miracles go. Here's the deal. You and three of your least annoying orphans will be on my boat for the competition. When I catch the winning fish, we'll split the earnings. Caprende? I know why my mom left me now. Oh, God, here we go. So I could help you win this tournament. Of course she did. Tell me about the the young men in the film. You're going to reel in the fish. Me? Those were some special young men, it seems. Yeah, they, they were great to work with. They're uh, very improvisational, and you know, you know, we just had a fun. God doesn't always answer our prayers the way that we think he should. And no matter what happens, ah! you'll always be my sons. You get a limited amount of time with them, and they bring in so much energy just the whole time, which is we we can't help but to feed off of it. Here we go! The one thing that I really keyed into, these themes around being a father and being a man and, and in the world, and... Mason! Both Captain Wade and Omar have this symbiotic relationship where they learn from each other. We've never had a chance, but we still have to try. Blue Miracle is streaming on Netflix right now. We are taking another look at the film this evening on Studio 5. We're also sitting down with the stars of Spirit Untamed, and we're chatting with recording artist Anna Golden. You can catch Studio 5 this evening at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. And, of course, you can find that on the CBN News Channel. Coming up, America's battle for freedom began with prayer by men who didn't even believe they could pray together. You don't want to miss this story. We're going to have it for you when we come back. Stay with us. Daddy? Yeah, buddy? How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels Look, in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my bones stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die... Will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board certified neurologist and number one New York Times bestselling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog, and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can, and I'm going to show you how, along with some of the world's most well-respected brain experts in this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD, only from the Christian Broadcasting Network, featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy, improve your memory, discover the gut-brain connection. In Protect Your Brain, get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD Protect Your Brain and get it today. Your news channel, your shows, the stories you care about. Anytime you want, anywhere you want, 
Download the CBN News app today. As we did on Memorial Day, the U.S. honors those who defend it and have died for it. But even before it was a nation, soldiers were gathering to take up the cause of the American colonies against their British overlords. Yet they would be led by men whose first business wasn't war. It was prayer. Paul Strand tells us of their first coming together in Philadelphia and how it was under God. Feeling the lash of British oppression, colonial representatives first met at Philadelphia's Carpenters Hall in 1774. But no one was sure how to begin a Continental Congress. Firebrand Samuel Adams jumped in with a controversial proposal. Let's open in prayer. Isn't that amazing? America is opened up with a proposal for prayer, and it begins with a debate over prayer. We can't pray. Because historian Peter Lilback points out they were Catholics, or Protestants from a wide array of denominations. They never prayed together. They all thought they were from different religions. They thought we're biblical or we're true and they're not. Adams was a Congregationalist, basically a Puritan like those who under Oliver Cromwell fought a vicious civil war against England's Anglicans. And the Puritans had chopped off the head of the head of the Anglican Church. He's called Charles I the King. But Adams made a revolutionary statement. I can pray with any man who loves his God and loves his country. So here he is a Congregationalist. And he says, I hear there's just such a man over in that church over there, the Anglican Church. He proposed his pastor, Jacob Duche, open the Congress in prayer. It was at that moment that Samuel Adams created the American ecumenical spirit, where in the public square we can walk over our denominational boundaries. Literally, if you will, he stepped over the aisle. Duche came, but all dressed up in fancy priestly robes. He came in his full pontificals, which meant he was really decked out with the very things that Puritans hated. He held the Anglican Book of Common Prayer, which Puritans loathed. But then Duche began the reading set long ago for that day in the book. With a possible war looming, the Congress felt it was a totally prophetic moment as the reading was from Psalm 35 about being loyal to an elder who suddenly betrays. That we had been loyal to the mother country and they're turning against us and harming us. It started out, fight against them that fight against me. John Adams wrote his wife. So you would have thought in God's providence that was put into the Book of Common Prayer just for this day for us. Duche's prayer then asked God for freedom from the rod of America's oppressor and ended in the name of Jesus Christ. It's quite a remarkable moment that that's where the American story began. In prayer, as opposite sides came together for a greater good in the name of Christ. Paul Strand, CBN News, Carpenters Hall, Philadelphia. Time now for Wednesday's word, and today's word is actually three. Place, pace, and position. Remember this, be careful not to always take the often crowded and easy road. It's hard to find your place, set your pace, and take your own position when surrounded by a crowd of people who are often standing still, doing nothing, and going nowhere. With that word, make today a wonderful Wednesday. That is going to do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. You can always find more of our programs on the CBN News Channel. You can find them there at any time as well as online at CBNNews.com. We'd love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. Email us, newswatch at CBN.com. And, of course, you can always reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'd love to hear from you. Again, make it a wonderful Wednesday. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Bye-bye.